Digital World Acquisition Corp trumps back as it's commonly known is being bought by Wall Street. So we saw a new Wall Street firm, Lincoln Capital Corp, come in and buy 85,000 shares. This is a brand spanking new filing here. So we got a 13F update earlier this week, which basically tells us who owns the stocks in the stock market. And we can see that the large, a, a very large asset manager, Lincoln Capital Corp, is buying more of Trump stock. So that is also good to see. And then WSFS Capital Management also becomes a top 10 shareholder and now owns 19,000 shares. And then let's take a look at some of the recent news for this company here quickly. So we can see that the company recorded a loss of $79.1 million in 2021 and a profit of $50 million the following year. But lost $23 million in the first half of 2023. In that period, it has taken in $5.9 million in revenue. And then it's also some concerning quotes coming from Digital World recently. So Digital World said TMTG's independent registered public accounting firm has indicated that TMTG's financial conditions raises substantial doubt as to the, its ability to continue as a growing concern. According to the filings, the company has borrowed almost $38 million to fund the launch of True Social, a Twitter alternative, um, as most of you know, and obviously Trump posts exclusively on here. The company has $2.4 million in cash at the end of June. And then the, the company generated $2.3 million in sales in the first half of this year been a lot of issues with getting this deal closed we've, we've seen an extension we just got an extension approved i think it was last month so i, I really want to see this deal closed I, I i think every shareholder in uh digital world you know wants to see this deal closed because it's just been taken forever and you know i i just, I just really want to see this done until it's done it's tough to say that this stock is you know worthy of capital just because it's you know it's just so speculative honestly um uh, obviously, if you're you're getting into the stock, you're you're doing it with the mindset knowing that you're taking a massive risk. The stock is a massive risk because it's not even Truth Social yet because we haven't merged. We have no clue if if this stock will will actually be able to you know merge, and we'll obviously see what happens. But I'm rooting for it. I, I'm definitely rooting for this merger to happen. But with that being said, let's take a look at the short interest for this stock. So. Currently, the stock has 7.6% of the float sold short, which is definitely a good chunk. And we also have 13 and a half days to cover. So that tells you that it takes 13.5 days of average volume to cover the shares that are sold short. That's definitely a good chunk. When we look for a stock that's signaling a high likelihood of a short squeeze, we look for that number to be over 10. So to be at 13 definitely signals that we have a high likelihood of of a short squeeze and fintel which is a site i'm using for this information here ranks out every single stock in the market and tells you what the likelihood of a short squeeze is and this stock actually ranks as the 249th most likely stock to have a short squeeze which puts it in the top six percent of stocks on the market so this is definitely a jumpy stock as you know if you've been trading it for a while so Definitely think this stock has a high likelihood of a short squeeze. <clears throat> and then let's take a look at some of the short borrow fee rates here. So the short borrow fee rate is 14. It is basically just the fee a short seller to short their shares. The higher it goes, the, the, the more um, costly it is to short sellers to short the stock. Really just signals um, a higher likelihood of a short squeeze the higher it is. The average number for this is 0.3 to 3%. So to be up at 14%. It definitely signals that it's very expensive to short this stock, short squeeze potential perspective. And then with that being said, let's take a look at the chart and give up a corp. So we're coming off the test resistance at around $17.30, which is where shares had topped out in the past. In September, um, we didn't top out exactly there, but, but roughly around there, August, we topped out around there as well. And uh, we've seen some consolidation over the past couple of years. So this $17 level could act as resistance for the stock. And to be honest, we're, we're, so we have a overbought condition according to RSI. 
So given our RSI is overbought, we're coming up to a level of resistance. It leads me to believe that we could see a move lower over the coming days for Digital World Acquisition Corp. So I'm thinking we could probably get a move back down to the 50-day moving average at around $15.65. That's kind of what the technicals are pointing to, is we would see a move lower off of this overbought condition down to the 50-day moving average at around $15.70. So that's what the technicals are telling me. Um, obviously, from a fundamental standpoint, we're still very dependent on that this merger getting closed. So cross your fingers if you're um, kind of hoping for that there. But um, as I said, you know, a lot of Wall Street firms coming in and buying the stock definitely can consider that a positive. We even saw at, um, advisor group holdings increase their holdings by 71%. So um, definitely good. And, and, and like I said before, once we get some clarity and some well really just once this stock actually merges we'll see a lot of these wall street firms passively come in to own the stock so blackrock state street vanguard they own every single stock in the marketplace therefore if this stock is simply able to survive on the stock market it's going to um you know cause those larger asset managers to come in and buy the stock so it's also worth noting though that Morgan Stanley did sell out of their holdings. Or excuse me, that yep, they Morgan Stanley sold out of their holdings last quarter. We saw TD uh, Waterhouse in Canada sell out of their holdings as well. So definitely were, was some sellers, but it's it, it's good that we're seeing some fresh money come into the stock, such as Lincoln Capital Group, which is a very large company, and definitely is you know good to see that this company is bullish on. So <laughs> with that being said. Um, you know, proceed with caution in, the, in this one. Like I said, this has a ton of risk. Make sure you're aware of that. Make sure you're cognizant of that. And just, just be real with yourself. You know, this is, you're investing in essentially a SPAC. And when a SPAC doesn't get, get a deal done, it has to return its capital back to investors. So just be aware of that. Be, be realistic in your expectations. This has been a very squirrely type of deal. There, there's, been a lot of uh, been a lot of speculation and a lot of worry around this deal even getting closed. So, at least be cognizant of of that fact. Like like I've said on this channel before, Digital World Acquisition Corp um, is an interesting investment just because the social media space is so so overvalued in my opinion. But um, you know, a lot of investors out there like to buy social media companies, and if you know True Social really sticks, which many think it will digital world acquisition corp could be a very valuable company in the future but like i said ton of risks here do your own research there is a can't say enough a ton of risk in a stock like this and like i said from a technical perspective i think we probably get a pullback in the short term for this stock so with that being said i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you here next time